All right, welcome back. It's another great day. We're making some progress here. We got some floors sanded down as good as they're going to get with the old, uh, I think I hit it with 40 grit, knocked down on the high spots. So today I've been working on sanding down the bow, patching all the holes. I sanded all this down with the 80 grit, mixed up some um, chop strand with some resin and just put it all in there. With all these, you can see the, uh, these are the spots where I put that lag into it and missed it several times we'll see how well they clean up um, with this front here it actually did lift up and it's it's holding it's holding a lot better than it was got some of the stuff on here I'm just filling all the holes hopefully yeah, she's pretty hard already it's only been on here for about 45 minutes um, I'm hoping this afternoon there's a bunch of holes back here hopefully sometime this week I'll be able to actually paint this thing. I don't know what order I'm going to do it in. I'm thinking I'm going to do this this top washboard first. And then from there I'll go down and do the deck and the sides. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down. This has just been primed. That's it. So that way when I come back I can put a... Uh, I don't know what the heck this bug is doing right here. Look for something. I can uh, prime everything all at once. Start from the front and work the way back and get it all knocked out okay i ended up not recording the whole thing i got this sanded down with 320. it's uh i think i'm gonna put another coat of primer on there it feels flat to the touch but we'll see um there's gonna be a board over this here covering that hole up so who knows maybe i won't do it um and up here i'm gonna have like you know gps depth finder mounted so i don't know we'll uh i'm gonna think about it tonight up here uh, where this glass overlapped onto the hull, I took some of the Total Boat Total Fair and I just put a little into that cavity there to kind of ease the edge. We're going to see how this works. I'm not looking for perfection here. This boat's damn near 40 years old. I don't care if you can see the seam. I just didn't want a, like a really aggressive like lip where the glass uh, was laid against the hull. Just something that the paint will hopefully stick through. So we're going to sand this down tomorrow and see what that looks like we'll be ready to put some primer on here and then paint it we got all that fairing that i set down sanded down uh as good as it's gonna get um got all the patches on the gunwale or the washboard or trans or pulled cap or whatever you want to call it sanded down today is probably the absolute worst day uh of the year to be doing anything involving paint or priming so naturally um, that's what we're doing today so it's probably gonna not work out um, because well I have dust saw on there this has only been cleaned once I'm gonna clean it again and again and then tack rag it before I put paint on it but I'm gonna move in sections I'm gonna paint tack rag the next section or clean it tack rag it paint it yada 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 on and on <sighs> hope you enjoy it this moth that's in here, it's going to have to die because I'll be damned if there's a moth that flies into this shit. At the end of the day, it's just primer. It's pretty much sacrificial. Uh, it's going to get sanded down. We'll see how many coats I need to do, one or two. Everyone on the internet says do two coats, so I'll probably do one because I like doing shit my own way. Uh, oh, nice. There's some bird shit stuck there. I have to get that off. It's going to be pretty challenging with all this wind blowing all this dust up but hey whatever it's got to get painted that my back is completely cramped my neck is cramped I am sore from bending over we have our official first coat of primer on the hull cap um, it's definitely gonna need to be sanded 
uh, we'll just point out a few areas here where I overlapped it too much and laid it on too thick and yeah I was learning I would say this half of the boat over here the first half went uh, it was much more difficult than this half I dang rookie mistake I ended up letting the uh, the pot dry up a little too much so I started well I remembered that I needed to pour a reducer in it so over here it was just uh, well over here it was going on a little too thick I thought I was gonna have enough so I was kind of spreading it thin over here then I realized you know what I need to quit half-assing it just do it right the first time uh, as right as possible the first time so i went and mixed mixed up another uh small small batch i literally just eyeballed everything there were no specific measurements i poured paint into a cup that already had paint in it i poured the converter right into it about one to one eyeballed it and then i just splashed a reducer into it until it was about the same consistency that it was when it began um and it uh it laid out really well it actually laid out better uh in some areas than it did over here um now, obviously, you know, it's not perfect. There are some areas, some bend holes over here. And honestly, there, this damn thing is so old. It would, I would have spent months trying to patch up every single hole on this darn thing. So I got a majority of the stuff. I'll tell you what, from the back of the boat, I mean, let's just step back here. Back here, man. Whew. That looks like a brand new boat. That's crazy. I, uh, I don't really know what to say. I feel really good. I'm really happy I took all the, the time to get everything flat. Just a few, uh, I guess, takeaway items that I learned. I don't know if any of you ever have the desire to use this Alex Seal, Alex Seal, Alex Seal, however you want to say it, this product. If you do, like areas, so on this, it's got this like raised, raised edge here, or radius, whatever. Uh, I noticed that when I was applying it, and I'm using those four inch mohair rollers, I noticed that when I was applying it, you know, just spreading the material out, you know, you don't want you want you don't want it over saturated the roller, um, but you want enough to, to spread it out. And I felt like doing probably like 36 inch sections worked out really well for me. It, it was manageable. Like I when I put it down, it would roll out easily, and I could come back and kind of smooth it out. Um, for this, my my thought process was I was going to roll it out the length of the boat. And then come back and uh, as you saw, well, I think I switched it up just because I was getting uh, getting bored at times. But coming back like this, uh, I guess horizontal versus like vertical strokes and then doing a final light stroke all the way down. Um, now, this is going to have anti-skid on the top, so I could really care less what it looks like if it's like pretty. Um, but on the inside here, I wanted this to flow out nicely, so it, it required the minimal amount of sanding as possible. Um, cause this is not, it's not perfectly flat. I mean, there are some divots in here where I didn't put enough, excuse me, glass or didn't put enough filler. Um, and it's just, I don't know if you can see it or not. I mean, it looks, looks pretty fair from here, but, but that's besides the point. Um, for here, I went horizontal here and spread the material out. And you could probably see it in the time lapse. Uh, there were sags that were developing and then I came back and, uh, went vertical with the roller and then... I would deload the roller, unload it, or you know, empty it out, whatever was gathered, and then I would do thin, light um, strokes up and down. Um, I think I did some left and right strokes up there as well. With this radius in here coming in, I realized that you know, just pushing the material into the radius was fine, but then to really perfect it and get a nice even coverage, I was dragging like out here, just really, really light up and over, and then on the edge I was going on the top. So instead of like cocking it sideways, I was trying to do that, but the roller was then hitting on this part and not just here, the uh, the inside. And so then they were getting like drag lines because the roller was, there was too much resistance on the roller. So it was dragging the paint versus rolling it out and spreading it. So those are just a few tips. Um, and that goes to show another thing, how great this product is, whether you're an idiot like me and you just mix it on the fly and don't really measure it, or you're doing like really scientific measurements, it's still going to come out looking good back to uh, where we left off yesterday primer went down nicely got a uh, pretty good even coverage at all laid out except for those areas I mentioned in the previous clip a little bit ago um, I just went through cleaned all the sides wiping them down like four times with that uh, cleaner 
stuff it smells like kerosene it's apparently it's not uh well it's not acetone because acetone reactivate the fiberglass and start to break it down so that when you put paint over it it'll just material i i don't know that's just what i read online so this is a cleaner that's not acetone to get all the dirt and grime and dust off the sides i would say i got about a solid 80 percent of the dust and dirt off um yeah there's still going to be dirt in here it's going to be trapped it's going to be part of the boat i'm going to prime the sides because they are currently clean i don't suspect anything else is going to fall on them this tent is dirty as mess and then i'm going to come through and paint the that front enclosure that I created, made, uh, and then work the floor back all the way, hit up the console where I missed a few spots. Hopefully I have enough primer. God, I hope so. Um, if not, we'll have to break out the gray primer and uh, put on the console or paint the console blue. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah, bear with me. This is a learning experience. I'm a time lapse. And uh, yeah, we're gonna knock this out. Okay, well that took my entire life to do using a four inch freaking mohair nap roller or whatever roller you want to call it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it was a pain. There's still a lot of show. Didn't cover all the way. That's just a shadow right there you're seeing. I did my best to keep these lines even. Um, I got quite a bit of paint left over so I think I'm going to put another coat on the floor. Just to fill in some of those... Uh, less covered areas where the paint started getting thin i think i don't know i figure the more primer the better per, create a better bonding uh surface i'm satisfied it all's white it all blends i mean you're gonna see the imperfections in the floor and the ripples in the sides but i don't really give a shit at this point uh it's just uniform which is great and um excuse me we're making progress in the right direction it's now the next day it's been about 12 hours since we painted the primer on rolled it on um you know i was uh <clears throat> i don't know what that is something's shoving through huh i'm gonna go and roll another coat out of primer <clears throat> on the floor give it a real real light sand on the floor <clears throat> in some of these areas just to kind of knock down some of the high stuff and then come over and put paint on it that's where we're at so i think we're gonna roll out some primer and uh get her going All right, we got the second coat of primer down. It's uh, looking a lot better now. Um, still some unevenness where I overlapped with the roller. Like I said, just comes with time and experience being able to roll out paint or primer and make it look good. Heat mounted there, so probably a low traffic area. Hopefully, cross my fingers. I have no doubt now that when I put that white paint on, it's gonna 
it's going to take and just really brighten everything up nicely gunwales i think they're pretty good i mean they're looking right um i think i'm just going to sand them down and then paint them as well because i am done rolling this primer out it's about, about an hour and a half i think it took me to do this um I understand I'm using a four inch mohair roller, so it's a lot like cutting a golf course with a uh, push mower. Uh, well, at least that's what it feels like, but yeah, so there's paint on the, ooh, there's paint on the boat now. Well, just the gunnels and the transom. I put my first coat of Alex Alexiel, Alexiel, uh, the white, Matterhorn white on yesterday with some buddies over here. I didn't video it because uh, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't want to mess it up. However, um, she turned out nice. This is just one coat. Pretty glossy. Um, really happy with the outcome here. Um, I, it's going to take a couple coats to cover this. I mean, there's obviously not a lot of hide in the first coat. Much better than I was expecting. Um, but like up here and on the gunnels, it turned out nicely. going to put probably two more coats on this part. Uh, definitely on the back here. But what I'm doing today is I'm doing this uh, non-skid stuff. I'm waiting for the paint to catalyze. It's this rubber texture particle soft sand stuff. It's really hard to get and it's really freaking expensive. But this is what it looks like here. It is uh, it is very, very soft to the hands. And I am very curious on what this is going to be like once it's applied. What I decided to do, like, this is old like takeout tray or whatnot. I just drilled a bunch of holes in it. And I just plan on shaking it over top of the, the paint when I go to apply it. And as you can see, I've taped off. I wasn't really sure how much to tape. So I'm going to start out. I just mixed up four ounces, or I'm sorry, eight ounces of total paint. I don't know if there's much battery that's going to last on this GoPro. I might just roll it out. But basically, I just taped off sections. I'm just going to do a section at a time. This paint has a really long pot life. I was surprised yesterday when I was applying it. I did this back transom. I did this top. I did the inside and then all the gunnels all the way out there to the casting platform or the bow and all the way back on uh, 16 ounces of paint. Um, total 16 ounces, not just paint. It was eight ounces of base, four ounces of reducer, four ounces of converter, and then a half a cap of this. And it painted all of that one coat. I finished with just, just enough left over. So. This stuff goes really far. If anyone's watching this and they're painting with the LX Seal, they uh, definitely do less than what you expect it to take up. If you have to mix more, you can mix more. This stuff is just so expensive. I'm, uh, I'm honestly, or obviously on a budget when it comes to this thing. I'm trying to do it as efficiently and effectively and cost effective as possible. So I'm not trying to waste any product. I know those paint guys, they got to retire one day, but not on my watch. So anyways, got this stuff taped out. It was a pain in the butt to tape it out. They're not straight. Lines aren't straight. Nothing on this boat is freaking straight except the keel. Um, so what you see is what you get. There's probably going to be curves in it. It's not going to be perfect, but it, you know what? It's going to be good enough for me. So we're uh, coming up. we got a couple minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and tack rag there as I'm going to do. And uh, we're going to get started putting this um, non-skid down and see what she looks like. back after uh, a little intermission we got this soft sand broadcasted out nicely I'm really excited to see what it's going to look like tomorrow once I sweep all this up and pull up the tape um, so I ended up mixing too much paint on accident of course uh, the plan was to go all the way up to the bow <coughs> And I figured if I use half the paint that I made yesterday, so instead of 16 ounces, like I mentioned, I did 8 ounces. Um, well, I had enough paint, but I didn't have enough soft sand. So this is a little over 3 pints of the soft sand, medium grade. Um, and well, I think when I got to, <clears throat> like right about here, there's a line there. I knew I was running too short, so I had 
previously purchased a pint of the soft sand fine grade and uh, well I mixed it in to a stir cup and just stirred it up with this medium grade stuff and uh, it uh it worked it's definitely a little bit honestly I don't even know if you're gonna be able to tell like to the naked eye the difference at all this is gonna help cover it up and in the event someone wants to step on there they won't be restricted to stepping in the same place over and over again where there is non-skid so I would highly advise when you get this stuff if you do decide to go the soft sand route just make sure you have enough or break it up in sections like I did I was super intimidated at first when I got this um, just one not knowing what I'm doing and two spending a lot of money on a paint job well not a paint job but the actual product with the possibility of completely screwing it up and wasting you know almost a thousand dollars worth of paint so very uh very what's the word i'm trying to say very intimidating at first however just i just follow the directions you know do what they say they're they're kind of hard to read sometimes but i'm also kind of dumb but if you have you know if you're not completely smooth brain you can figure it out and this stuff just goes on so nice you don't have to load up the roller a lot like just roll it out and then don't overwork it and it'll just flatten right out okay welcome back we got the tape peeled off and uh the whole non-skid went on nicely i'm about to put my second coat of white over top of this looking at it now i kind of think i should have maybe left the tape on here um where it was taped off just because this stuff is really now i mean it's it's stuck on there but there's still some like loose little granules and i'm worried they're going to get caught in the roller and then spread onto the uh the regular surface paint uh, it's looking good hopefully the second coat will give me a lot more coverage on this um i went and sanded it down with like a 320 to 500 grit scotch bright pad Put some nice swirl marks in it to get that good me mechanical adhesion since it's been out of the 18 hours or i'm sorry yeah 18 hours between coats so i'm going to put this coat on here it's about to be the hottest part of the day hopefully it'll cure I and mean, i can put the set the third and final coat on this evening at about nine eight six we'll see we'll see what it's like because uh, i really don't want to sand this again and i want to get this freaking done and over with so that's where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and paint, spread out some more uh, this Alex Seal Matterhorn White, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, we're back with more uh, more paint action today. I've uh, been off doing other things for the last, I'd say, week or so. We're about to put the third and final coat on. This is uh, sanded down with like uh, 320 to 400 grit, a uh, mixture of sandpaper and a Scotch-Brite pad, knocking down all the just a little ripples like I guess it's called orange peel or whatnot um, I did end up having a, a little mishap with the sander I'm not gonna show what I did because I feel kind of embarrassed about it it was an idiot move um, also the sander kind of got away from me so I had to do a little repair work on this thing um, I'd say it worked pretty well because I can't you can barely even tell where I, where it happened at um, so this is a uh, pretty easy stuff to repair apparently also if you have a mess up or you're an idiot like me but uh, I'm not gonna record me painting because no one likes watching paint dry. Uh, we're just gonna come back and uh, after this is done. I've also got the inside all primed. I went and put the second coat on the sides last night, sanded those down, sanded the floor down, gave everything a really good clean. Um, it's really hot today. I've got the fan going. There's gonna be debris in this paint. I really don't care because it's, not, it's gonna be textured. Um, so there's probably going to be a few bugs that land in here, but that's what you get for doing it outside in the backyard under a tent with a fan blowing. So hopefully everything goes down smoothly. Hopefully I have enough paint to do it all. Um, also, we got the bracket all primed and ready to go. This is the part that's going to be mounted up to the transom here. Um, I'm, my intention is to put a coat of paint on the back here and maybe just go all the way around. Um, I just want to get a coat of paint on that before it mounts to the transom. And then I'll come back, you know, flip it around on this bracket and then paint the rest. Um, I just don't want metal on the transom in case, you know, I mean, salt water gets everywhere. It might rust. I don't know. It's stainless. It shouldn't rust. But this is just a protective layer. Uh, so it's not metal against that rubber mat that I'm going to put on it. But anyways, going to be short and sweet to the point. I'm going to go lay some paint because it is a little hot out here. And I don't feel like spending my whole day 
rolling out paint with a four inch roller. All right, well, just like that, uh, we got paint down on the whole inside of the boat. Um, it took a lot longer than planned. All that tan stuff you see is a soft sand. I just threw it on the floor. That's the wet paint right there. Whatever sticks, sticks. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. There's gonna be plenty of texture. Hopefully it's not super slippery. I'm gonna come over with one more coat of paint. I think I have enough white to get it all done. Um, overall, I'm satisfied. Got a coat of white on the console also. I think that's gonna need one more coat. And then the transom back here, that turned out nicely as well. I, uh, you know, I don't have a single bug that's in it besides this bug right here that's trying to land <coughs> over here. I didn't touch it at all. I didn't get any hair in it, didn't get any debris in it. I've had the fan blowing all day. It's been windy. I don't know how I managed to put this paint on this this nice, but uh yeah. She uh she's looking good. It's I think it's still gotta settle a little bit. It's only been on here for like four hours now, so hopefully she flattens out a little bit more and gets rid of some of that orange peel, but well, I guess we'll see. Uh the motor and bracket's gonna take a majority of the space, so as long as the sides look good, excuse me, that's all I care about. Just a few little takeaway things that I have learned with using the soft sand. When I was pulling the tape up, I mentioned that uh, that was a bad idea and I shouldn't have done that. And I was right. When you're putting this stuff down, it's probably best to tape everything off, leave it taped, clean it, and then reapply your second or third coat of paint onto the soft sand because there's still gonna be loose particles and then you're gonna drag them into the areas like right here. So that is my mistake, uh, I learned. Uh, there's probably some directions somewhere that I didn't read, but you know what? I don't really care because uh, it looks good from 10 feet away and this is going to get stood on. There's going to get fish guts on it. It's going to be covered in God knows what. It's stored outside. We're not looking for a brand new showboat. I think it'll look fine, but just if you're, if you're a perfectionist, kind of like I am and you want to get a really good uh, result um, without messing it up like I did, just make sure you leave the tape down, clean it really good, sweep it, collect it, do whatever you got to do, vacuum it, and then... Uh, then paint over it so it sticks it in here. Uh, then also uses like double the amount of paint anything else does. Um, this is, I tried rolling it instead of broadcasting it at first. This is all the stuff that was left in the bottom. This shit sinks to the bottom. It's not good for rolling. I would not advise it. Just roll out your first coat of paint, then sprinkle it, broadcast it, do whatever you gotta do on it. Um, but that is, uh, that's about it for the day. I'm gonna call it quits. And uh, so you're a motorcycle pulling up now. So yeah, we'll see what it looks like tomorrow.